Namaste, Muji. Namaste. First, I want to thank you for uh, the space and everyone I've been connecting with verbally and silently here. It's been mm. a blessing, and I send it to them. So, <clears throat> there's kind of been a I can do another process. I heard you say the other day it's not a process, so. Um, <laughs> not, kind of not, a, I cannot say anything absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. in contemplation, what I've been doing is everything, the moment I see it arise, I surrender to God. The moment. The, more, the moment you see it arise? The moment I see it, I surrender it. Okay. So, be it a feeling, be it a thought, be it a, the body wants to move, mm -hmm. be it anything as I'm sitting there for mm. hours. Mm -hmm. And last night I, I did it after uh, the RT, and it was almost like I, s I saw the perceiver, mm -hmm. but the moment I perceived seeing the perceiver, it left. Mm -hmm. Which you perceived also. Which I perceived also. <laughs> So that's kind of what I've been doing here, and the quest, part of the question is, is that um, something useful? But then as I was sitting over there, I had this awareness that even sitting there doing it, even the, is observed. Yes. It's all just being observed. Um, and then one of the mornings, this is kind of a, yeah, one of the mornings, so I, I drink the cooler water, mm -hmm. so I took a coin. The next day, I grabbed a coin, and I had an instinct, grabbed two coins, just in case. And I ended up needing to buy two batteries for Seva. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I have the coin. And I saw the mind take um, authority of the deciding to take the other one. Mm -hmm. And when I had an awareness that there was almost like a sense that said to grab it, does, will the mind like take authority of things is another question. Does that make sense? It depends if how much, how much uh, value you give to what you call mind. You see, The more you are aware of the, the isness, the less you will need to, to, to go to the mind for things, so to speak. In the isness, all things resolve themselves beautifully. There is no need to go to some other department. Mind itself is resolved in the isness. Mm. So the sense mind takes authority. It means it become. It means less and less for you. It's not you know it, because you see all of this is going towards a kind of complexity. Yeah, it's true. a kind of complexness that we you know again you have to work something on. Then this you have to do. And how are you going to remember all these things? Mm. How simple it is true when it says you your mind you become like a child again. It's so simple. Mm. We venerate all this complexity. We think, oh, we're so sophisticated in knowledge, but actually, it's not any big deal, you know. If knowledge is of any use, it is only to remind you of your truth. In itself, you know, to learn about something, you know, that is also, you know, as it has been said before, all knowledge that you acquire, it all amounts to just learned ignorance, if you don't know who you truly are. And that is the fundamental uh, thing to know. But it takes us a long time to come to that, to that recognition, because of the urge within us is always to, to more and more, learn more and more, and get more and more and more. You see? So um, at some point, maybe you start to realise that less and less is also even better also, for a bit. And then, at another point, more or less does not mean anything to you. These are the seeming stages. At first, more. I want to get more. Learn more, get more knowledge, get more experience, travel more, see more and more things, more practices, and all this thing. And then after saying, oh, I've got all this stuff, and all it is is just I'm constipated with all this knowledge. And then you have to take the laxative of another kind of thing. And then it's less, 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 and less feels really good. Less, 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 less. And then at a certain point, more or less don't mean anything at all. You, you are the isness. Can the isness become more isness? Or, no. or less isness? No. You see, it's so beautiful, no? It's so beautiful. But somehow, sometimes, something says, Yes, but I want to go further. I want to go more deep. I want to go. 
and say, okay, if that urge is there, let's see what you have to say. But as soon as we begin to explore, very often we are going into more complexities. Sometimes you're going deeper and deeper, and then you realize you're only going deeper and deeper in the mind. Mm. What is the depth of the being? How many inches? How many, how many meters? How many kilometers? It's meaningless. It's distanceless in one way, you see. But while the urge inside is to know more and to get closer and to go more deep and to go more high and so on, it will produce more and more activity, and the mind will always send you on a journey. You get more and more. You're getting closer. You're getting, you're getting clo- clo- Oh, you missed it. Oh, oh, let's go. And you see, and this is the so-called adventure of self-discovery. You see, another one. The sun is travelling all over the world, all over the world and world. In the end, they still don't know anything at all. Another one sits quietly in a cardboard box somewhere, and they are universal. Such paradoxes is taking place, you know. So um, this simplicity, which is already present, sometimes it is overlooked because we want to have the taste of knowing something. The minute you want to know something, you reinforce duality in some way, because you think the thing exists independently. And most of us in the world, we actually think that things exist unto themselves, independently. And as yet you are not aware of the unified field of oneness, that they, they are just like a soup of sensations. And so. All this becomes really beautifully harmonious in, in, within you. And what does it amount to? That your being comes into a kind of silence, a kind of natural easiness, peace, and, and joy, uh, just naturally. What is its value? Its value is if you recognize it and you value it. If you don't value it, it is not valuable. If you value it, it's valuable. This life works also in very simple ways. You see, for myself also, my world is very simple. You know, very simple. People think that um, oh yeah, you know so many. Things. I don't know anything about that. Actually, it's so simple, really so simple. Do I want it to become more complex? Mm-mm. <laughs> nice like this. Nice like this. My mind next is, well, how should I contemplate? <laughs> yeah. You know, should I try because to you think you have a mind. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah. the mind says, how can I do this? And I say, well, I don't care. You're going to do what you want to do. Yeah. I'll wait here and see who wins. Mm-hmm. You see, you can exist without this psychological mind, but it cannot exist without you. Mm-hmm. Judge which is the greater and stay in the place of the greater. You can be without this psychological aspect of the mind, but it has no existence apart from you. Has anybody seen some loose mind running around the place? No, no, you never. It is always a relationship between the pure sentience in its expression as being, when it when it extends or projects itself into the mode of personhood then that function called the mind, or the psychological mind, the egoic mind, comes into being and comes into play. And it will behave as though it is the friend or even the adversary of that identity. It will play for a while, and chiefly it gives trouble to itself. It only stops giving trouble when it discovers its deeper, uh, its source, its root, its ground, in the isness again. Everything. Then you begin to exhale. Ah. Exhale means feels very light, happy. You see, hmm? everything, even death of the body, is what. Ah. Exhale. Can you imagine? I used to myself used to feel, grow up, you know, see quite a number of you know, dead bodies. It happened. Even one time, a child was died in my bed. I didn't want to sleep in the bed anymore. Hmm? One of my aunties came, and then I had to give up my bed, 
and the, they slept in the bed. In the morning, the baby was dead. And uh, so we grew up with a lot of this, like this. So it was a very, very terrible feeling. I would go to funerals, you see. I said, Oh, God, no. why? Why must we all end up like. I said, No, no, no. And then it came one time that, you know, the final breath, your final breath, is it in or out? Out. Can you imagine if it was in? <laughs> your last breath. <laughs> it's a horrible idea. It means that somebody took it and it's still in there. It's horrible. Last breath. There isn't any dead person, a dead body. There isn't a, a dead body with a dead person in there. <laughs> They've gone. Body. When we live in the state of ego, you know, we are often living on the in breath. A lot of tension, because the ego is not sure of itself. So it's when you discover yourself, relax, nice. It's very good. Move naturally, you know.